So I guess you're interested in learning some animal facts in a way that would get me fired from a school building. Grab a coffee, relax, let's get to it. <laughs> yeah, that was a barracuda. You know, the fuck no fish that turned Nemo's mom into supper. I got good news and I got bad news. These ocean butter knives are carnivorous and can grow up to five and a half feet long. These sea separators swim so fast they can cut their prey in half. When this sea snake knife attacks, it can swim up to 60 kilometers per hour, and with teeth sharper than a pinhead, it just cuts things clean in half. They have adapted for fish that are more difficult to consume by having sheath in the bottom jaw of their mouth for each one of the teeth on the upper row. Like a locking mechanism, each one of its teeth lock into the sheath at the bottom so that the fish cannot get away. Their prey items often sexually identify as a quarter because they're also shiny, so they like shiny things. So you're less likely to get attacked by one if you don't wear a watch or a ring or anything shiny into the ocean. Now for the positive news. On the bright side, that barracuda probably wasn't trying to attack that guy. Like your girlfriend on a date with your french fries, they'll sometimes follow the larger predator and get some of the leftovers. <laughs> it blows my mind people don't talk about how big these bucktooth seals are. This is a 12 foot long, 3,700 pound arctic blubber bus. In walrus world, size does matter, even for the ladies. They have a tusk based society, and even the women have them. Bigger is better with these 3 foot long, multiple pound canines. Bad news for you little guys, little or broken tusks can usually mean you get knocked down the totem pole. There was a prehistoric species of walrus known as Gomphatoria that had four tusks, two on the top, two on the bottom. Where you're packing six inches, these meat mountains pack it all over, they have a six inch layer of blubber. These vampire seals are also one of the only animals that have been known to take down the Klondike Bar's mascot, the polar bear. Any animal that's strong enough to take out a 2,200 pound clear coated arctic puppy gains respect from me. Especially being they're one of the few animals that hunt humans during migration. The toothy torpedo may be one of the few animals you share a stinky sleep schedule with because they've been known to sleep for up to 19 hours and stay awake for three and a half days while at sea. I'd imagine if a walrus could talk, it would probably pronounce walrus like Mike Tyson. <laughs> Although this animal looks like the most miserable rock in existence, that is what's known as a stargazer. It's both venomous and electric, so stop testing if it's ripe or not. This bottom-dwelling grumpy patch of sand spends almost its entire life sedentary, much like most Americans. This sea stun gun can hit its prey with over 50 volts of electricity. It may not be enough to send them straight to the Shadow Realm, however, it definitely stuns them enough so they can't run away. And it probably won't pose a big threat to you and I unless your heart runs on a battery. And I hate to admit it, but although similar, it is more impressive than what I left in the loo this morning. This terrifying thumb does not get its electrical currents from plugging itself in. Instead, it receives them from specialty organs behind its eyes. Unlike you and I, this Tesla turd is professionally designed to lay on the ground all day. With its mouth positioned where its hairline should be, it's a perfectly designed bottom feeder, so when fish swim over it, it catches them almost every time. I do regret to inform you, they are not completely harmless to us. This living landmine does have spikes full of sleep juice located above its shoulders. This gulag gazer has taken people, you guessed it, to the gulag just from one simple mistaken step. Swimming in the ocean ain't safe, walking in it ain't safe either. I feel like this is the perfect time for me to explain that these Florida freeloaders may be able to live forever. Real life reptar isn't exactly immortal, but they don't expire. During a crocodilian's lifetime, they grow non-stop. And much like calorie people, it's safe to assume that an animal that gets large needs more food. These store brand T-Rexes also battle a lot of body wear, especially being a ferocious animal that they are. They lose teeth, they gain injuries, infection, bacteria, illness. And due to scientists' ability to pinpoint their exact lifespan range, they believe that all of these challenges are what hinder them the most. Since there's no dial doctors or dial dentists, it's kind of the world that takes them out, not themselves. Our crocodiles can reach up to 23 feet and 2,200 pounds. Could you imagine if they kept going? They're also known for closing their dental death trap at 3,700 PSI, or 16,000 newtons. It only takes up to 4,000 newtons to break the largest bone in the human body like a breadstick. The fact that quadruple that is impressive enough, and now they're borderline immortal. The only thing that isn't fake about this video is how terrifying the Atticus spider really is. 
Nicknamed the Huntsman Spider is not what makes this eight-legged fuck no so scary. It's the fact that it gave up on spinning webs entirely because it's so damn fast. This terrifying not so little track star can cover up to 40 times its body length and distance in under a second. Adults grow up to 12 inches long. If you do the math, that's about a yardstick per second, making them the fastest spider on the entire planet. I'll give it to this gross go-getter. It makes no sense to spin webs and wait for your prey to come to you. I'd go to it too if I was that fast. And the largest, of course. It's one of the few arachnids that don't stop at bugs. Rats, birds, and even possums are on the menu. Yes, it's fast enough and can jump high enough to catch birds. They prefer to live in caves, and if you're in Australia, your house. And will even consume one another given the opportunity. These cannibalistic critters don't just stop at giving me the jitters. They're also impressive in the way they can sense vibrations from their prey in order to track them down. And if they're in your house, you should move because the females can lay up to 200 eggs. And although it's not dangerous to humans, of course they pack a sleep serum that's dangerous to their prey. So I'm gonna stay away. We're zookeepers. Of course my best friends have been to wrong. This buttery popcorn smelling porcupine is known as a binturong, or a bear cat, which isn't a bear cat at all. It's actually a viverid, which is part of the Civet family. Yes, I did mention this movie theater mitten does smell like buttery popcorn. That's because his number one has a cocktail of chemicals that emit the same aroma when combined as popcorn. Unlike you, they have no idea where they got their name from because the language it came from is now extinct. So maybe it meant something, maybe they pulled it out of a hat. They basically have five arms, and one of them is what the weird kids used to wear to school, a tail. Unlike mine that only gets hard every time I need to stand up, theirs is pretty useful. Assisting them in climbing trees and like your uncut friends with a weird patch of skin that helps them get better grip. Baby binturongs are known as binlets, and I think that's great. Now you may like that smell of popcorn we were talking about before, however in the wild they can be extremely aggressive and they're known for spreading number one and number two all over you. So if you don't want to commence biological warfare with an animal that can't figure out what it is, don't piss it off. Binturong also walk a lot like myself after one too many. This is because they have extremely weak ankles, so they wobble a lot. What do you think binturong means? <laughs> this animal is a patu, but I like to call it a googly eye glider, and you'll understand when you see it from head on. Bro's got the same facial construction as Hey Hey from Moana. Honestly, the most comforting thing about this bird is the fact that it sexually identifies as a tree stump. You might be thankful that it looks like his eyes are closed, however, he can still see you. They have slits in their eyelids, which they use to keep watch. Come on, bro, why do you look like this? This fucked up looking freeze dancer will hold this position all day and all night. While he's awake, while he's asleep, doesn't matter. Those massive marbles it likes to call eyes are there to allow it to see really well in the dark. It's basically a biological pair of night vision goggles. And aside from looking like it has an extremely high body count, that massive mouth is around because it eats insects. Like calorie people, it cannot get enough food. It just flies through the air with it open and catches everything. They also hiss like cats, growl like dogs, and whistle. Unlike your mother who doesn't have eyes in the back of your head, the patoo basically does. He can turn his head 180 degrees so he can see his own ass. Green anaconda. And she is huge, one of the heaviest snakes I've ever caught. I've been waiting a long time for this. Yoink. Bro gripped that harder than Riley Reed does. And you can't tell me this doesn't remind you of the girl everyone ran through. If you don't know the yoink guy, you do now. And he's got kettlebells bigger than any man I've ever seen. And it's no surprise to me for a guy that walks around with a note rope that big. He goes on to mention later that the sea later serpent he caught was only 14 feet long. Unlike you and I, anacondas are growers and showers. It's only half the size. That BGC can grow up to 30 feet, 550 pounds. Like a lot of men, their size is often exaggerated. However, they give better hugs than your grandma. Green anacondas are constrictors, which means this danger noodle is slowly squeezing the life out of you, and every time that you exhale air, because you have to breathe, it squeezes tighter. Packing somewhere between 10 and 15,000 different muscles in their body, they can squeeze their prey at a pressure of 90 PSI. That's the equivalent of being slept on by an elephant. The only animal on the planet that can throw it better than her because it can take down and swallow this milk mountain at 2,500 pounds, the adult bull. This picture is going to give me nightmares. They are not picky eaters, and they have two wieners. These squiggly telephone poles are also known for cannibalism. They spend the majority of their life underwater, even eating most of their prey in there, and these squiggly scuba tanks can hold their breath for up to 50 minutes. I love animals too, but you don't see me going around yoinking them. I'm glad we got a guy for that. Thank you. Wow, it bites down on food almost as fast as your average American calorie human. But that ain't the scary part! They grow up to about the same size as your average target grower, 5 feet and 100 pounds. Oh, and the biological bear trap eats crocodiles. 
Yet the largest Goliath African tiger fish ever recorded was a record-breaking 154 pounds. Fish Skylark packs some disgusting dentures, one inch each and up to 32 of them. Being this river monster does not have dental insurance, you bet your sweet baby they shed those. Every five days, all of them fall out, and then they come back. Delivering one of the most fatal French kisses that you'll ever see in the wild, their jaw opens from the top and the bottom, unlike ours that only opens from the bottom, so they can eat big stuff. This goes for other fish, frogs, crocodiles, piranhas, and when his freshwater pantry is all empty, or doesn't have food that he wants to eat, birds. They jump out of the water and eat birds. This freaky fish also knows how to ration. If food is scarce, it will take bites out of larger predators, or even each other. Go figure, reason 54 why I don't swim in rivers is cannibalistic. And according to Jeremy Wade and a handful of locals, human attacks aren't exactly zero. Rivers are scarier than oceans and you can't change my mind. This is the world's first and only known poisonous bird. If there's a manager somewhere, I want to know who authorized this. A hooded pitahui, or I don't know, the air it is, I'm no English teacher, pronounce it yourself. If you touch this be gone bird, it will feel like your hands are stuck in a pit of fire. This caustic critter's body is covered in more toxins than your girlfriend's face is covered in skincare products. Which means making contact with its skin, its dander, its feathers, you name it, it's gonna hurt. But where's that burn butter come from? A prime example of you are what you eat, this bird eats berries and bugs. This killer cocktail, however, specifically comes from the Choracine beetle, or a toxic beetle they eat. This Batrachitoxin bus can send your body into convulsions, cardiac failure, or even... Bye-bye. In high doses, of course. Luckily, however, they wear a warning for other animals and you, because their coat is colorful, bright orange, and bright colors in the wild often mean... Don't touch. <laughs> Luckily, the potent poison also comes alongside a potent warning because it stinks and it also sends off an odor that allows other animals to know you probably shouldn't come near them. Even though their main predator, snakes, don't seem to care. The Barracuda from Finding Nemo is innocent and I'm here to defend him. The film has us under the impression the Barracuda did to Nemo's mom what all your friends said they would do to your mom in high school. Much like your average Starbucks iced coffee drinker, Barracuda reached 5 feet 100 pounds. With a mouthful of steak knives and the ability to swim 36 miles per hour, they're known for cutting their prey completely in half, which is why a lot of the time they eat larger prey only. Like your boyfriend's reproductive organs, these circus fish only cap out at around 4 inches. Juveniles will go after smaller prey, however, he ain't no child chopper, he didn't eat Nemo's siblings. You're never gonna guess who did. This clown bitch, otherwise known as Nemo's mom, Coral. You're gonna want to strap in for this one, because we might ruin your childhood. Clownfish are like millennials, they can change their gender at will. Science nerds know it as hermaphrodites. A school of clownfish is like an all-male private school with one outcast, because they're all boys except for the biggest one. That's the lady. The first problem we come across, Bruce Fisher, because Nemo's dad is clearly bigger than Nemo's mom. Which is because Nemo's dad is Nemo's mom. Male creamsicle fish in the wild, or in the movie Nemo's mom, are known for watching over the eggs until they hatch. For any of you that have siblings, one of you is slower, and your mom and dad would know it if you were a clownfish. Because during this time, the male will scope out any eggs that seem damaged or non-viable and will consume them. Nemo's mom eating Nemo's siblings because Nemo's siblings were too low before she got eaten by a baby barracuda isn't the worst part. Nemo is a boy. Nemo's dad is a girl. There's only two left in the school. Disney, what in the fish cest cannibalistic underwater fuck is this? You ever been curious as to why dolphins swim in front of ships? Probably not, but I'm going to tell you anyway. These terror torpedoes are extremely smart, and they actually do this for fun. Think of it like a river roller coaster. Dolphins have learned that the wake of a ship actually allows them to swim faster with little to no effort. Science nerds are under the impression they do this for thrill, and that's not the only thing they do for fun. If you eat a pufferfish, you will get a first class ticket to the free world, because they're extremely poisonous. Now, pufferfish might be killers to us, but to dolphins, it's just a killer high. Yes, the poison just gets them stoned, and they eat them often. The only thing dolphins don't have in common with the high school boys' locker room is the smell of Axe Spray. Unlike us men, dolphins don't have morals and they're seen poking around with their hot dogs pretty often. This is a nice way of saying they have zero standards and they will fuck anything. Specifically this river dolphin masturbating with a fish head. Don't worry though, the fish was dead. And I mean anything. Three people per year claim to have been by a dolphin. This leather submarine has also been witnessed putting other animals on the stairway to heaven with no apparent reason, no intent to eat them, they just kill them for fun. But are these pedal porpoises as intelligent as a human? What I can tell you is your emotional intelligence level is a 7.5. Dolphins are a 5.3. So I don't know, but what I can tell you is next time you go swimming with dolphins, you might be having more fun than you are. 
Animal facts that will make your day a little bit brighter. It ain't who we're gonna start with first, it's what? Baby owls. Much like myself, they were born with a giant head, so they sleep face down because it's too heavy to hold up. Store brand Blastoise basically has a face full of ass. Sea turtles have a modified cloaca, which allowed them to breathe out of their ass. And I can't imagine it smells that good. If you live in New York City, you're well familiar with rats and mice. And who would have thought this snake kibble is actually ticklish? So next time you see a mouse, I guess go tickle it? Or don't? I don't know. Ladies, this one's for you, aside from loving this little milk machine more than your own boyfriend. All cows will make a best friend if given the opportunity, and they will hang out with them every single day. So you keep rooting for them from the passenger seat. We are not the only other species that propose to their significant other with rocks. These wannabe birds do. Male penguins will offer a female penguin their favorite pebble as an invitation to mate. And she will add it to her nest of pebbles she's been working on for days in order to create a family. We are not here to discuss how pugs are constantly suffering and struggling to breathe. What I want to tell you is a group of them is called the grumbling. I just thought it was cute. Not only do these river rats sleep on their back, but sea otters also have a pouch in which they're known for keeping their favorite rock. Share your favorite animal fact with me in the comments below, or don't. But maybe I'll share it in the next one, or I won't. We're all aware that Nutboss is big, but did you know it was 52 feet 90,000 pounds big? With one of the ugliest underbites on the planet because they only have teeth in their bottom jaw, and the fact that each one of those vicious veneers can grow to the size of a coffee cup, aren't even remotely close to what makes them terrifying. It's the fact they dive up to 10,000 feet deep in the ocean, the only place in the world where it's darker than my ass crack, just to eat the real life Kraken. Giant squid, colossal squid, see you later squid, cause he's eating all of them and that's what their tentacles look like. And did I mention this water mammal also makes perfume? This rotten rock is called ambergris and it's almost as expensive as the rock they keep pushing back over the border. And it's made of everything the whale couldn't digest from the squid. Since we're on the topic of TMI, they also produce milk and that shit's thicker than glue. The blubber bus keeps getting weirder because they sleep vertical. Come to think of it, it might not be that odd being that they have the biggest cranial cell cluster in the animal kingdom, so might be able to learn a thing or two. Yes, they look menacing now, but 50 million years ago, they didn't. This lizard dog is Pachycetus, otherwise known as 50 million year old sperm whale. Unlike humans, age did him good. Humans are not the only animals that keep other animals as pets. You and I adopt pussies, pooches, and sometimes goldfish. But tarantulas adopt frogs. These eight-legged fucknose will trap frogs inside their burrows, and they do this because the frog will consume tiny insects that will eat the spider's eggs. Aside from how awful it sounds to be the property of this hairy squishable, the frog has protection from predators too. Now, although this sounds awful to me, the slimy suck me to make me a prince doesn't seem so sad. This relationship's actually called mutualism, and it's just much more goofy to think of the frog as a pet. Oh, and side note, uh, lucky for Mr. Frog over here, because have you ever wondered how tarantulas eat? Like, obviously, like you and I, they don't have a jaw or teeth. They got these pointy fuckers. These are actually called fangs, and these vampire bugs inject venom using said fangs. This animal that has a really good relationship with the bottom of my shoe uses its fangs to inject the prey with venom. This is a mental health warning. Before we head forward, you may want to swipe now. Once bitten by the scariest thing inside of Miss Spider's sunny patch, the venom starts to act quick. Matching my nickname known by the ladies in high school, the venom is known as a liquefier, and it starts to liquefy the prey's insides. That was a joke, I still play with Legos. After his Happy Meals insides are liquid, he then sucks it out like a smoothie. And I hope you don't mind that I left you with that. Peace. I know what you're thinking. What the fuck was that? That bird that makes your zoo sound like you just stormed the beach of Normandy is known as the Shoebill Stork. And its mouth that sounds like every single redneck's favorite toy isn't what makes it scary. It's the fact that it swallows crocodiles like a fucking Twizzler. And like any good predator does, the Shoebill Stork usually targets the juveniles. And this doesn't stop at real life reptar because the Shoebill Stork will also eat large fish, snakes, monitor lizards, and other ducks. Any animal that shoots back these cold-blooded glizzies faster than the woman that hides under the bridge near my house cannot be trusted. Would you be surprised if I told you the Shoebill Stork also has a fetish for dismemberment? If the prey item it finds is too large to be swallowed, the Shoebill Stork will use its jersey meat hook of a face, press it into the animal's neck, and pop that shit off like a bobblehead, and then swallow it like a tic-tac. Shoebill Storks actually aren't storks at all, and they're more closely related to pelicans. Pelicans are opportunistic predators, which means they're constantly trying to jam shit in their mouth that can't fit. Which is why it makes it worse that the Shoebill Stork is related to them because it also has weapons. And did I mention that they're 5 foot tall with an 8 foot wingspan? So you short kings are seeing this thing eye to eye. These IRL pterodactyls also take sibling rivalry to another level. That's because occasionally siblings fight trying to decapitate one another and see who wins. But mom loves you both equally, right? No, that's not necessarily true. 
If you appear to be the weaker one during the fight, sometimes mom will let you starve and then you die anyway. Oh, and did I mention they're best friends with this diabetic pony? Yes, this African-located decapitation bird hangs out around the only animal Steve Irwin wouldn't go near. Hippos are so dense when they go swimming, they sink, and it scares the fish, so the Shubo stork hangs out nearby so when the fish go to the surface, they can eat. Besides loving decapitation, eating crocodiles, and fucking up his entire family, the Shubo stork is also absolutely disgusting. Life in Africa gets pretty hot, so he's gotta figure out a way to stay cool. What else to do but shit on your own legs? Yes, he shits down his legs to stay cool. You're best friends with hippos, and you eat crocodiles, so why are you scared to just go in the water and cool off? And that's all the reasons the Shoebill Stork is my fifth favorite animal. Peace. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to be bitten by the giant desert centipede. Coyote, bro, I love you, but you don't have to do that. Do you have any idea how venomous these ramen noodles are? This ain't some ass to mouth experiment. This we don't like you worm has enough of nature's NyQuil to put to sleep rats, bats, birds, frogs, you name it. He eats them. There's around a hundred different species of these roid rage millipedes, and let me tell you, the Amazonian ones are even more impressive. Much like your black friend, they grow up to 12 inches. His extinct cousin makes me want to shoot myself to the moon without a spacesuit, but for now, we'll stick to the ones that are still alive. The sleep syringes coyotes trying to fuck around and find out with are not teeth, those are legs. Modified to deliver his sleep saliva, that makes it one of the most deadly roundhouse kicks on the planet. Not related to millipedes, not related to worms, but sometimes Australians eat them. Can someone confirm that, please? This ain't no squiggly stormtrooper either. They've got good aim, and when they bite, they go for the ass, much like myself. Specifically aiming for the thoracic nerve cluster of their prey. This is an area where the venom can quickly travel to shut down the entire nervous system, and your limbs can no longer move. Teeth like Dracula aren't the only quality they share. They've been observed hanging upside down in caves and lashing out at bats. If the land ain't safe and the air ain't safe, at least you can go to the water. Don't join them in a game of sharks and minnows, because they swim faster than you can doggy paddle, and they hunt in the water too. On the bright side, if you get bit by one of these desert dinkies, you should be fine, and symptoms should subside in about a few hours. But children, dogs, cats, anything that swims, anything that flies, you should probably steer clear. But the medical industry is under the impression it might be able to cure leukemia. Now don't be like the creepy dude at the club and go around poking things asses, because his butt's dangerous too. He's got spikes back there that he can use for whipping. This has to be one of the most intimidating insects on the planet. What the ten-legged, pointed, coochie face ass pointing fuck is that? That is a sun spider. Also known as a camel spider for their ability to jump on the back of a camel and burrow into their stomach. Which is a myth, but that doesn't make them less terrifying. Yeah, this creature that crawled out of spore is known for chasing humans. This half foot long desert dwelling don't come near me is known for chasing humans, and that's because they like to get out of the sun. These shadow seekers are known for chasing shadows. They'll follow you around in order to use your shadow as a place to cool down. It can run 10 miles per hour, and that means your average calorie human probably couldn't get away. Its mouth strongly resembles something from the female version of the movie Teeth. However, it's non-venomous, but it could leave a nasty infection. And you bet your sweet baby this desert crab wannabe will cut much deeper than your average spider. Like Hoarder's eyes are closer than your girl on a Miami trip with another dude. Now if you didn't catch it in the start, this asshole arachnid does look like it has 10 legs, but it doesn't. It's got 8. Those other two are sensory organs. They call them pedipalps, I call them ill. Whoever came up with this abomination, you really need to be punished because spiders, crabs, and scorpions are enough. You didn't have to combine them. What does catnip do to these furry freeloaders that fucks them up this bad? Well, I did some research. This kitty coke does in fact fuck up your cat neurologically for a short period of time. The reason your idiot is acting like more of an idiot than usual is because you're actually turning the cat on. That's why you might notice your furry friend begin to resemble a cat in heat. Congratulations, your feline friend is now fucking a bag of dirt you bought at Petco and you're sitting there watching you, cuckold. Yeah, that sexy stop, drop, and roll the cat's doing all over that dirt you bought is the same thing they do when they're in heat. Heat is the time of the year when a cat is most fertile, so you might see them humping the ground and looking at you like a snack. And like a furry convention, it sounds disgusting. <coughs> Other things that mimic cat coochie hormones? Grocery pouches, or as you normies call it, plastic bags. So stop letting your cat chew on those, please. Now that we got the weird stuff out of the way, you ever wonder why they flash their dirt star in your face? That leather Cheerio attached to the most ungrateful house guest you've ever had is their version of a handshake. Beavers carry their babies the same way I carry a six pack out of 7-Eleven. That's not the weirdest thing about them. Pond squirrels have orange teeth and that's because of the high amount of iron content in them. Same reason our body juice is red, thanks iron. 
It's no stranger to you and I that Beavers and that lady at the street corner both have a good relationship with wood, but I bet you didn't know that vanilla flavoring comes from a beaver's ass. This secretion has been used as a supplement for vanilla, strawberry, and raspberry many times in a lot of foods we eat. Not everything, but moral of the story, if it ain't vanilla bean, it probably ain't clean. The face of a chipmunk, the ass of a platypus, and he can hold his breath for up to eight minutes. If you had a bunch of nature's hard-ons and they were only about two inches in diameter, a beaver could drop about two dozen of those in a single day. And they tend to pick the ones that drive pickup trucks because the smaller ones are easier to move. North American beavers are small, but they can weigh up to 65 pounds. But thank God the giant one went extinct because it could take a redwood almost as well as Riley Reed. Beluga whales are Russian government drones. Russia straps these obese leather torpedoes with cameras and radars and trains them to go spy on other neighboring facilities. Don't believe me? Check out the whale that actually looks like sperm who's trying to be a videographer. And much like your average high school student with an e-cigarette, these animals can blow bubble circles. This eight-legged fuck no is known as Darwin's bark spider. And besides making my skin crawl and looking really good on the bottom of my shoe, this animal has the ability to spin silk that is stronger than steel. Nothing is worse than going outside and one of these biological lows just splooge itself all over my face. But could you imagine if it was one of these little fuckers with an ass that CNC machine steal? Aside from being the least sexually active animal on the planet and constantly trying to eliminate its entire species, these obese Oreo bears are all owned by China. Yes, China owns every single one of these obese black and white cookies, and if there's one in a zoo near you, it's a rental. It's really ironic to me that the animal that's really bad at reproduction is owned by China. Up next is the diabetic seal with a really bad overbite, the walrus. Growing up to almost 3,000 pounds and trying to look like me when I stick a pair of chopsticks in my mouth, it blows my mind no one discusses how large these are. And I bet you didn't know this, but sometimes they put polar bears to sleep. And I can assure you, you'll never catch me going near the animal that offs the Klondike Bar's mascot. This animal is a biological urine catapult, and let me explain. You know when you go outside at night and you hear that sound that kind of sounds like zzzz, and all those bugs are looking down at you like... Those are called cicadas, and he's their cooler cousin. This animal basically just goes like this and that and this and that and this and that, and then just blows a bubble filled with piss. Which he then places on his butt finger and flings it around like a spitball. Alright, that's all I got. Peace. No way, guys! Check this shit out! I found a albino possum! Come here! That is, in fact, one of the rarest animals in the world, being that this Caucasian creature is one in every 100,000 births. That's almost as rare as flipping a coin and getting the same side 17 times in a row. Whiteout wild animals are even rarer to see as adults. Animal attire was not an accident, and no, they are not obsessed with John Cena. This is a way for them to blend into their environment. This poppet bird with the twisted neck is blending into its surroundings to hide from its prey. So is this one, and it just looks stupid. Yeah, the reason the adults are so hard to find is because the prey looks like an item that says, Hey, here I am, eat me, and the predators can't hide away, so the prey always get away. This note rope should play lotto. That's because it's got two snakes, two heads, and it's albino. Reptiles are cold-blooded, and they bask in the sun to regulate temperature. However, white ones have an issue. They can get sunburned. One of my favorites is the store brand T-Rex, especially when it's white. What albino animals lack in melanin, they make up for in cool factor because they also come with red eyes. This is because a lack of pigment in their eyes allows blood vessels to become visible, so it gives them this cool red or pink tinge. I just like that they look evil. Ever wonder what happens when a danger noodle kisses its own keister? This seemingly deadly mistake is more common for the his tube than you may think. Thankfully, evolution has assisted the nope rope in making sure this fuck up does not become fatal. In the wrong way, that is. A good handful of these legless lizards take the front row seat of the most venomous animals on the planet. Some housing enough of nature's night quill to put a full grown elephant to sleep. So like I said, how do these butt bites not take them out too? Snakes look like a wiener, snakes have two wieners, and they're also filled with antibodies that will vaporize any venom that enters their body. The wiener thing had nothing to do with it. Like that girlfriend that was just too attached, these antibodies bind to the venomous protein particles, making them harmless, which are then distributed out by the kidneys. Instead of evolving to be more accurate, they've evolved to fuck up and just deal with it later. Exactly why glizzy gobbling and glizzies have to use force instead of organic over-the-counter drugs. This doesn't stop them from eating themselves on accident. Studies have shown that they're hungry, stressed, overheated, or confused, they might just consume themselves out of pure delusion. Herbologists are still trying to figure this one out, but I would assume the inbreeding is probably a big mistake. Yeah, wow, super cute. I know you're all into the impression that if you touched one of these furry frogs' offspring, it would leave it to die. These hopping hamsters are actually great mothers until you dig deeper and realize they eat their own shit. And it all starts with their untamable teeth that they have to constantly file down by eating coarse food, otherwise they'll grow directly through their skull. Much like your average American diet, a rabbit's is hard to digest, so they have to eat it twice. They got two different kinds of number two. One is hard, one is soft, and the second one goes for a second lap. 
These leaping losers not only took the L in the race with the tortoise, but also the digestive evolution because they have RCPD. They can't burp, they can't regurgitate, and this has nothing to do with RCPD, but they sleep with their eyes open. Evolving to watch for predators even when they're out cold. Fun fact, carrots are filled with vitamin E, and if you didn't know, the E here stands for ending your life because rabbits can't only eat carrots and they don't actually really like them. I don't know where that myth started. Rabbit ears do not hang low for little reason. They benefit them in a lot of ways, one of which is hearing for up to two miles away. You're telling me Max and Ruby can hear me from further than I'm willing to run in a day. Are you kidding me? Have you ever looked at a chicken and wished it could play video games? Of course not, but there's a Nimrod who did. Meet the VR headset for chickens, and yes, that's real, because who wouldn't want to play Minecraft with their cock? Alright, that's not exactly how it works, but... One guy felt a little too much emotion for these soon-to-be chicken nuggets that live in slaughterhouses. So he designed the Oculus C, or Chicken VR. His idea was to make these chickens living their life on death row think they have a better life. Inside the headset, the plan was to allow these bone-in wings to see other chickens, to see other bugs, different atmospheres, different landscapes, you name it. They even had a plan to make the chicken a gourmet meal and allow the chicken to go over to that meal and eat it, but the meal in front of the chicken in real life would just be a bunch of seed and corn. Because obviously, like any sane person would do, instead of just giving the chicken a better life, we're just gonna give them a VR headset. Could you imagine dropping into a game of Warzone and you're really pissed at your teammates because they suck, and all it is is a chicken going... <laughs> and I can't be the only one that thinks that the slaughterhouse owners aren't going to buy these knockoff T-Rexes headsets. They don't care that much. If you're wondering why I called it a knockoff T-Rex, that's because the chicken stands closer on the evolution line to the T-Rex than it does a bird. Oh, and SideQuest, the guy that created the meta quest, decided it was a good idea to create one that'll kill you in real life if you die in the game. Yes, those are three explosives. And the same guy that created the headband of death is also currently working on one that won't come off unless you beat the game. I think some of these VR people need to relax. We're going too far. That's all I got. Peace. This is the animal embodiment of do your ears hang low, do they wobble to and throw. Anyways, while we're here, some facts about goats. These farm puppies are pretty resourceful, and if you didn't know, they eat a lot of different things. But one of the weirdest things is tree bark, because they get some nutrition from it sometimes. Oh, and they got their name from me. Speaking of trees, there's a specific kind of goat that climbs trees. Times where you'd find these goats, the vegetation is pretty high up off the ground, so they've evolved to, well, climb some. Oh, and if you didn't know where argan oil came from, it comes from a goat's ass. The feces, specifically. The greatest animal of all time also comes with an odd way of letting each other know there's danger afoot. They just start sneezing. However, there's a specific species of goat known as the fainting goat that just pass out when they get scared. Actually, this ridiculous reaction doesn't only happen when they're scared. Sometimes it happens when they're too excited, too happy. They just pass out when their emotions are too aggressive. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave you with a video. Hey, Echo. Oh, wait. Uh oh. I love you. Ah! Yeah. Oh. Sorry. How you doing, sugar? Oh, should make it. Can you guess what animal has one baby every three seconds, 24 hours a day, for 25 years straight? These fertile factories also build these towers. And no, it's not your mother. It's the termite. More specifically, the one that looks like your uncut friend, the termite queen. And I'm sure you know a lot like your one fruity friend in the group, they eat wood. Termites are cellulose connoisseurs, and wood contains the right amount of cellulose for them to survive. It only takes about 60,000 of these homeowner nightmares to consume one 2x4. If you're down to suck down one of these slugs or her minions, they're rich in iron, calcium, and protein, so you can eat them too. Some termites are growers and build their colonies underground. And some species are showers, building that dirt dick outside the ground, almost as tall as some trees. These disgusting day laborers work harder than everyone else, working 24 straight hours a day. They never sleep. Since the price of lumber skyrocketed for no reason at all, they make their mucus mountain out of feces, saliva, and clay, so I wouldn't touch it. The largest poopy palace was home to a recorded three million termites. There is one animal that's not afraid to touch it, and they're known for going to war with termites. They're their biggest predator. Can you guess what that is? It's an up-close image of an ant, or as I like to call it, the bodybuilder bug. Every member of their stinky society has a different role. They have workers, they have soldiers, they have breeders. The soldiers, however, cannot feed themselves, so they rely on the workers to produce a stomach smoothie by regurgitating cellulose into their mouth. You can fight a war, but you can't eat.
Knowing they live in defecation domes, it might blow your mind that they're actually pretty hygienic. They spend most of the day cleaning each other. Unlike the Queen of England, the Queen of the Termites works pretty hard. And she actually has a reason for being there. She decides what the other termites will do for a living. The little feces fanatics she calls kids, she feeds feces. She then secretes a pheromone onto each individual piece of her own feces that then tell her children what they're going to be when they grow up. These biological beepers have incredible sensory organs, which they use to communicate with each other by receiving and giving off vibrations. And much like men, some wood is good and some wood is spoiled, and termites use these vibrations that trees and other wood give off in order to decide if it's nutritious enough or not. They can literally speak to the trees. And if you didn't think any of that was impressive, some of these child cannons in certain species have been known to push up to 50 years long. The average human lifespan has only got that beat by about 25 years. I'll leave you with a fun fact. If you put every single human on Earth on a scale, we'd weigh about 350 million tons. But termites? All of them? 450 million tons. You are looking at the rarest shark ever caught on camera. That's because this little toothy torpedo is the only one of its kind that's ever been filmed. That's mommy's little freeloader, or as y'all like to call it, a baby. Great white shark. Yes, that is a baby great white shark, and scientists have never seen one before. On camera, that is, but why is it so important? What's so wild about this is science nerds have no idea where great white sharks get freaky in bed. Like, extremely little to none about their breeding process as a whole. It's like a sneaky sex club. And to think this little white rocket has the potential to grow up to 20 feet long and two and a half tons. With toxic blood, the ability to smell you from five kilometers away and glow in the dark eyes. Anyways, this little swimming cigarette was filmed off the coast of California where there were also spotted three enormous great white sharks in the same area. They're also speculating baby Bruce over here is only a day or two old. I can't be the only one that thinks it's absolutely mind-blowing with all the technology we have. This is the first time we've ever seen a baby great white shark. I don't know why, but I think we should name him Tucker. Manta rays can spit their intestines outside of their body at will. Watch this. That's how they clean their cavities and void them of parasites. Even more impressive, real life Man Ray over here can roll up to 6,600 pounds and 26 feet long. These whammo water frisbees are known for consuming zooplankton and are harmless to humans, so they can't be blamed for what happened to Steve Irwin. Oh yeah, and these sea stealth bombers can fly. They also swim in groups known as squadrons, which is even more military-like. Off the coast of Costa Rica, they even spotted one of these deformed dinner plates in all white. Beyond rare, by the way, one in every 100,000 births in animals come out all white. And that animal surviving to adulthood like this one is even harder because they don't have the necessary color pattern to blend into their surroundings. It's like advertisement to your natural predator. You'll also probably never see one sitting still, because in order to stay alive, they have to keep swimming. It's how they keep oxygen passing through their gills. What about shit bricks? No, seriously, their poop comes out in the shape of cubes all the time. Your average-sized New York City rat dumps these dookie dice over 100 times per day. It's like biological Yahtzee. This Australian marsupial's magic anus has mystified scientists for ages. Understandably so, because you might think that ass is doing origami being the fact that he can push squares out of a circle. But there is a reason for it. The rectum rodents intestines legitimately spend multiple days forcing it into the shape of cubes. Its intestines are constantly pushing at it, trying to retract water and nutrients from, well, you know. But the one mystery at hand is why did they ever evolve with this origami orifice? And aside from nutrients consumption, the only other idea is that they often climb up on top of rocks and logs to mark their territory, and square stuff doesn't roll away. Their butt just keeps getting more impressive because it's also their most dangerous weapon. They're nocturnal, and during the day they live underground. If they're being chased by a predator, they run in and block off all exits with their asses. And if the dumpy door fails, they can also run as fast as humans. Their shiny teeth also never stop growing, so they have to eat rough food to file them down, and believe it or not, their closest living relative is the Chlamydia Care Bear, and they're terrifying when they're wet. And a group of them is known as a wisdom. But if a group of them gets together and poops, I would imagine it just looks like illegal gambling. What in the bacon be gone is that? The everybody's glad you're extinct and teledomed. Or the 2,000 pound, 7 foot tall hell pig. What gave them one of the most terrifying nicknames on the planet we'll get to in a second. However, this 30 million year old prehistoric pork loin isn't actually related to pigs at all. They're more closely related to whales. 
50 different fucking species of these baloney begones, and the largest of which had skulls that were about three feet long. Decorated with a set of dentures that is unmatched in shape by any animal on the planet today. Scientists think by the shape of these vicious veneers and the muscles that surrounded them, they had an extremely strong bite force. These biological jaws of life, or I guess death, were estimated to be able to open to about 90 degrees, large enough to fit another one of the same kind's head inside. Their closest relatives are hippos and whales. And since this meat missile has a bite force of around 2,000 PSI, and this terror torpedo's got one that's around 20,000, even though it was never stated, you can guess the hell pig was somewhere between that. Like us, they were omnivores, however marks on their teeth state they may have spent a lot of time chewing on bones. And like slapping two pieces of impossible bacon together, it's likely they butted heads quite often because those same scars were present on each other's skull. The last of this species did go extinct around 15 million years ago, and scientists aren't exactly sure why. Scientists, though, do say that bear dogs may be a main culprit. I'm no scientist, but sounds like it's scary enough to make me go extinct. Ridiculous looking animals that actually used to exist. This Shrek squid is known as Tully Monstrum, and all I want to say to nature is what the fuck. Making his first appearance is about 300 million years ago, around the same time your grandma was born, he was probably a carnivore and only about 14 inches, luckily. The toothy torpedo that got into bed with the table saw, the helicopteran shark. The fact that it looks terrified to close its own mouth isn't the scary part, it's the fact that it reaches up to 25 feet long. With a smile only a mother can love, you bet he used that thing for slicing animals in half. The elephant that forced fuck the bulldog, the platy belladon. Their upside down buck teeth were as sharp as knives and used for cutting straight through vegetation. And their dinner plate face was used for scooping up dirt like a shovel so that they could find things to eat underneath it. After that weird southerner turned that small mouth bass into a large mouth bass, we got Leeds Thictus. Also known as the fuck no fish that got way too big. It's basically a 96 foot prehistoric minnow. Thankfully this Jurassic period cruise ship only ate plankton. Suck a bombas piss or your uncut friend. Huh? This fish is the embodiment of what the fuck did you do to me? Yes, it's the animal that looks like the front side of a Prius and it also is a jawless fish. Which means his mouth is just gaping wide open all the time. Unlike your uncut friend though, they're only about 10 inches long and they also have the same physique as your brother that's never left your mother's basement. I'm here if you want a part two. I think we can all agree cats are douchebags. However, there's a couple facts about these assholes that we let live in our house rent free that I bet you didn't know. Let's get to it. Did you know these furry freeloaders have a fetish for earwax? And I'm not kidding. Much like your local homeless man's addiction to his next fix, cats can physically not get enough and they can't stop themselves. This goes for other cats' ears, your ears, your earbuds, you name it. If it's earwaxy, they want it. Oh, and you might think your cat loves you. And that may be partially true. But unlike man's best friend over here, that when you die, will sit by your side until someone finds you, multiple events have occurred where these feed me fur balls have eaten their owners after they die. So to all you crazy old cat ladies out there, when you expire, keep in mind you're nothing but a giant can of friskies. Oh, and have you ever wondered why your furry fucker keeps walking around with its tail in the air rubbing up against you? Well, boy, do I have news for you. Cats often sniff each other's dirt stars in order to figure out who they are and where they've been. So boy, do I hope you're in a butt stop because you might be getting an invitation. This next one's kind of gross. You know the old story that cats bury their chocolate Twinkie in the litter box so they can hide their scent? Well, it's true, but that also comes for vomit. Now, as far as some studies are aware, scientists don't really know why cats eat their vomit, but some believe it's to hide their scent. And obviously, since there's nowhere to hide it, since it's just in the middle of the floor or your couch or your bed because, you know, they pick the best places, the only thing that they could possibly think of is eating it. Like, I respect your dedication, but you really don't have to go that far. And have you ever wondered why your cat's toe beans smell like Cheetos? That's because knockoff Garfield has the clammiest hands in the animal kingdom because they sweat through their paws. Oh, and when a cat gives birth, it's basically a full course meal. Yes, unfortunately, you heard that right. When a mother cat gives birth, she'll break through the amniotic sac, she'll chew through the umbilical cord, lick the kitten to remove any blood and goo from the aftermath, and then consume the placenta. And you guessed it, it's all to hide where she's been. Bro, you gotta stop. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, the next time you're thinking about adding a cat to the family, it might eat you. Or it's throw up, it's shit, it's placenta. But we got bees. For two months, every single animal in Africa gets wasted every single year. In an extraordinary event on the African savanna, wildlife seemed to collectively succumb to intoxication. All thanks to a fucking fruit, the marula fruit. In the months of fucked up February, and maybe I shouldn't have eaten that marsh, the marula fruit ripens and emits an aroma that is irresistible to everybody. Now the fruit's not the only one at fault, it's also the prehistoric people. 
Monkeys climb the trees, shake the hell out of them over excitement, and drop fruit all over the ground. And the fruit is loaded with sugar, and that shit ferments, creating alcohol. Everyone eats baboons, warthogs, and impalas, your modern day mammoth. They're so addicted to it that even animals that dislike each other will put aside their differences in order to get zooted. Get it? Zoo? Ted? Like zoo? No, I know what you're wondering. How strong is this shit? Well, it's comparable to whiskey. As you could have guessed, the animals that are usually elegant no longer are, and they can barely fucking walk. And to make matters even worse, the children get involved too. Because there's no legal age in the African savannah. It's literally just a two-month rager. Did you know some animals are more attracted to humans than their own species? No, really, ostriches have a sexual fetish for humans. Studies have shown that these captive-bred steroid pigeons have often found humans more attractive than their own kind. This often causes a huge problem for ostrich breeders. That's because when they're trying to get Big Bird to go to Poundtown on Roadrunner, Big Bird's more attractive to the breeder than its significant other. Studies also show this happens with both male and female monster chickens, and don't lie to me, this pick goes hard. But just like you and I, sometimes they get in a mood that makes them so horny they'll fuck just about anything. And when they're feeling some type of way, and humans are around, studies have shown that they will solicit sex twice as much. But it don't just stop at these feathery fuck nose. These giant horny leather torpedoes might just hit on your mom. That's right, everyone's favorite squeaky submarine will fuck just about anything. Dolphin genitals are very sensitive and they use them to touch and feel things. Which often puts them in the market for dead fish heads, other animals, dolphins, and you guessed it, us humans. And on average, two to three people per year claim to be graped by a dolphin. So next time you go swimming with dolphins, just keep in mind there's no difference between that family excursion and swimming with the guys at your local prison. That's all I got. Peace. These birds are truly one of a kind. The bird with the breast implants is known as the sage grouse, and believe it or not, that's the boy. Nature, I knew the millennials had this all fucked up, but I didn't know you did too. First, we'll address the elephant in the room, the way it eats, obviously. Like many people from My Strange Addictions, a lot of birds swallow rocks. Birds can't chew their food, so the reason the swallow swallows stones is Slutty can use it to help digestion. It actually sits in his gizzard and rips food apart for him. One cool thing about the greater sage is they don't do that. And due to this, they can't eat seeds, which is why a lot of the time they're found eating sage leaves and insects. Why does today's version of a pterodactyl got tits? Well, it's to impress the ladies, of course, and uh, ladies, I'm sorry, but... In this species, you're a lot less impressive. Spring in America is like a backward strip club for the sage grouse. That's because it's mating season and all of the men will congregate to perform a nice dance while inflating their pecs to impress the ladies. Air sacs are their musical instruments, producing mesmerizing sounds that resonate through the sagebrush landscapes. Like the backward strip club it is, the ladies pick the best dancer and the biggest pair of- Yo, Mother Nature, you really said fuck it with this one, huh? During these double D dance-offs, the flocks can get so large that they've been known to darken the skies. Although the breeding pattern is over-concentrated and erotic, it's worth it because the chicks are adorable. Come on, it's like the cotton swab I forgot I dropped under the sink. Ladies can lay up to 8 to 12 living lint ball eggs every single time they breed. And the only difference between their father and mine is mine will come back one day. He just ran to get milk. Theirs doesn't come back. He doesn't help raise them at all. It's a rare sight, a giant female great white shark so close you can see her sharp teeth. If you found yourself as a part of this Toothy Torpedo's three-course meal, you'd probably be dead before it ever even bit you. This see you later submarine is known as Deep Blue, and it is the largest great white shark ever caught on camera. Much like parts of myself, this meat missile is 20 feet long and 4,400 fucking pounds. Nerfed megalodon females are always bigger than the males, but the average is only 15 feet. How's it gonna ship you from the sea to Satan before it even bites you? Although they wear the same as your average smart car, they can throw themselves entirely out of the water. It's called a full breach. It's the nastiest game of fucking surprise, here I am, where they throw themselves out of the water in order to catch fast-moving prey. This orca's taco can swim at 35 miles per hour, so I want you to imagine getting hit by your average sedan. The meanest cartilaginous clothesline the ocean has ever seen. Let me know in the comments if you got the orca's taco reference. Like 25% of every millennial below the age of 18, they also mention this shark is pregnant. Not only is this sea sedan gonna off you if it whacks you, but it's also got passengers. Her freaky little freeloaders are about to embark in a game called Eat or Be Eaten. Recent studies have shown that mom's belly is a bloodbath. When the largest embryo finally grows fins and some teeth, it eats and murders every other embryo inside the mother's stomach. Side note, did you know there's great white sharks that stay tiny forever? They're a completely different species called salmon sharks, but they look just like one. Now, I'm not saying sharks like to eat people. However, I am saying I didn't like pizza until I had it the first time. Ooh, taste. Taste.
Tony, Tony. Am I the only one that thinks the Hooters mascot looks better than their employees? Did you know all owls don't hoot? These I don't know who you're talking about birds have incredible eyes. It's like something out of a superhero movie. Much like her grandma, they cannot see things up close. They are strictly farsighted, which makes them extremely good at it. These goggle birds can see so far so well, it's the human equivalent of in the dark sighting a mouse from over a mile away, only lit up by a single match. We have eyeballs. They have eye tubes or cylinders, so you could thank those for that. In the night flyer world, you cannot whisper. Because alongside only needing about 5% of the light to see things that humans do, they can also hear things from up to 10 miles away. This living stealth bomber has velvet-like feathers on the bottom of its wings and legs in order to help it fly silently. It can hear you from like a town over and you won't even know it's coming. Now, although this blender bird looks like it got stuck in, well, you know, a blender, it didn't. They have extremely flexible necks, 14 vertebrae to be exact. This just increases the line of their sight without moving their body up to 270 degrees. He's one of the few animals that have ever been able to see his own back. For all you foot finder freaks out there, try not to get too excited. Owls have a special swivel toe in which they can go from sitting normally to rotating to point directly behind them, increasing their chances of grabbing their prey. Every day, it reminds me more and more why they're the closest thing related to dinosaurs. Known for dying because it can't poop and a cat I want to stay far away from, the scorpion. Evolution had a bucket of adaptations and the scorpion chose the worst one. Instead of leaving a fart behind for its attacker, in the event of danger, it leaves its whole asshole. This constipation crab can drop its tail if it's attacked, however its butthole is connected to it, so it dies of constipation a few days later. These get away from me glow sticks also glow in the dark and uh, no one knows why. More specifically UV light, and since they've been alive for over 400 million years, oxygen levels were higher then and the UV rays from the sun were even worse. Science nerds think it's the way these Chernobyl critters handle radiation. Ladies, much like men, size is a good way to figure out which ones to stay away from. Big claws, little venom. Tiny claws means this sleep syringe has enough knockout juice to put you to sleep for a long time. However, it does more than put you to sleep. The Pakistanis use it to get wacky. Yeah, they're just over there token on dry scorpion venom, and it's a huge epidemic now. It has like a 100% fatality rate. The probability of survival is about the same as you cutting off your ass and leaving it behind for your predator to taste. These aftermarket arachnids also have a mating dance. They give birth to live young, and they can hold their breath underwater for up to one week. And that might be because of their ancestors, which were terrifying, by the way. The long since extinct sea scorpion. He doesn't look that scary, right? Yay, correct. You gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> that animal is a kalugo, also known as a flying lemur, and he's asking very kindly for you to make like a tree and fuck off. This little bird rat at first glance is easily mistaken with some sort of cracked out flying squirrel. He's not, and his name was poorly chosen because he's not a lemur at all either. They're more closely related to primates and tree shrews than they are lemurs. These fancy falling snuggy squirrels don't even fly, they glide. And they do it at night because they're nocturnal. Their featherweight skeleton and their built-in biological set of flippers like bats, webbed feet, is what allows them to fly so well. Fly. Science nerds aren't exactly sure why they evolved to glide. Um, they originally thought it might help them save energy, but after closer study, that's not the case. These terrestrial tree huggers have these adorable little pie holes that are lined with comb-like teeth that allow them to eat leaves, sap, fruits, you name it. But everyone's gotta eat, and everyone's got a predator. It's one of these airborne afros' favorite snacks. Meet the Philippine eagle. These air raider rats were previously on the endangered species list. However, they were taken off in 2008, so welcome back to comfort. But they're still at risk from habitat destruction, so get your shit together, people. People think I'm obsessed with this, but I'm okay with it. I am obsessed with it. You just keep fondling one of the most deadly animals on the planet the way I fondle myself. It's fine. Nah, it's only the most venomous fish on the planet. You'll be fine. Why is he shaped like every dude with a Napoleon complex? Housing all of his venom on his dorsal spines, giving him the meanest mohawk on the entire planet. These deep sea dookies have what is known as a Viraco toxin. That means this Recky Rock can deliver trouble breathing, intense pain, hypertension, and many other problems like death. But if you're lucky, convulsions, paralysis, and a shitty vacation. Along with constantly looking like it's having a bad day, you can survive this if you seek medical attention immediately. Or just holding them from their belly like a spatula with a pancake. I can't believe I have to say this, but much like the cheese touch, don't make contact. Now they are ambush predators with a lightning fast ability to catch their food, and that tends to be how they get most people. Yeah, it's not uncommon to find this living landmine sitting on the seafloor in shallow water, where most people tend to step on it. 
And I regret to inform you that just staying out of the water won't keep you safe because they can survive out of water for up to 24 hours. Sometimes they're on the beach. You know, if the tide leaves them at the beach bus stop and they get stuck. Bro is constantly ready to commit a suck down or a stabbing. So watch where you're walking. Those little microscopic day laborers are gonna die soon. This is nature's most deadly game of follow the leader. Let me explain. These freakishly long foragers use pheromones in order to communicate with one another. Pheromones are like a cologne that's recognized by each colony that ants use to follow each other into the forest and then find their way back home. Sometimes these pheromones work great and other times it poses a huge issue. Problems such as the assassin bug, which have learned to purchase the same cologne as the ants to sneak into their lair, live rent free, and consume their babies at will. And the one retard that started the last game of Ring Around the Rosie that these ants will ever play. Occasionally one of the worker ants in this forgetful line of follow the leader will find himself lost, only to then recognize the caboose of his trail. Only to then get lost in a consistent circle around nature's Macy's prior to the law against perfume attacks. These bodybuilder bugs can get lost in this circle either until they starve or 7 to 15 years, because that's how long most of them live. You can create a boat of bodies in the water by attaching yourselves together so you can float. You can create a body bridge across gaps so that your entire colony can get across. And you've been around since the dinosaurs, but you can't figure out that you're in a swirly that will send you straight to the sky. What the fuck? Animals you didn't know exist, part two. The rabbit you'd find under the bed at Sid's house from Toy Story, the Jerboa. There's 33 species of these kangaroo mouse bunnies, and I still haven't seen one in real life. How? Bro loves eating bugs, the only way he moves is by jumping, and he can do that at 11 feet per leap. With a little bit of idiot math, that's about 15 miles per hour. And somehow, trying to make itself even more uncomfortable, it doesn't drink any water, because it lives in a desert. No, I didn't origami a cheetah until it was smaller. That's a margay, and it's a species of extremely small, solitary cat. This mini mitten can be found in Central and South America, and believe it or not, he only weighs about 8 pounds. These monkey eaters spend almost their entire lives in the trees. And yes, I said monkey eaters. Monkeys are smart. How do they catch them? It's pretty sinister. They can mimic the sound of their prey to trick them into thinking it's one of their own. Are you fucking kidding me? Their cubs are born with spots and unfortunately have a 50% fatality rate, which makes them extremely rare to find. This little leather torpedo is known as the vaquita, and it's the rarest animal on the entire planet. This handheld submarine maxes out at about 5 feet long, making them the smallest of their species. Unfortunately, there's limited photos of these animals because there's rumored to be about 10 to 20 left in the wild. Unfortunately, science nerds have not been successful keeping or breeding them in captivity, so who knows how much longer they have. I'm rooting for you, little buddy. Animals I'll bet you never knew existed. Let's go. No, you're not looking at a family christening. That's a fairy armadillo, and yes, it exists. Stronger underminer vibes than any mole rat you've ever seen. He's also the smallest armadillo on the planet. And you know what they say about big feet. Big capability of digging holes. Nicknamed the sand swimmer because he can burrow through the ground faster than a fish can swim through water. Like your older brother to your parents' basement, he spends all of his life underground and almost never leaves. Which is why scientists worked on their habitat for 13 years before they even saw one. The reindeer that forgot he is in a walrus, the Chinese water deer. Evolution's just playing Mr. Potato Head at this point. Santa's Chinese Uber driver got a weapon permit, and you bet your sweet baby it's for fending off other males from their territory. It is the only species of Chinese deer, by the way. They don't have any other ones. The reason this biological buck boat is called the Chinese water deer is because he can swim multiple miles in one swim. For jumping island to island to find food. Raccoon dog. And no, I didn't make that up. That's what they're called. Is it a raccoon or is it a dog? This trash panda puppy is not related to raccoons at all. It's actually a type of wild dog. They live in diamond cutter nipple climates and that's why their coat is so damn thick. Of course, so they can dive into water that hits temperatures below freezing so they can catch fish. The ones by my house just eat garbage. If you want a part two, I'll do one. We spotted something on the ground. The tooth of a T-Rex. The day I found out this isn't what a T-Rex looks like, I think it ruined dinosaurs for me entirely. Oh, this is infuriating! Tyrannosaurus meth, otherwise known as the T-Rex prior to signing a prenup with Hollywood. I can get behind the idea that this leave me alone lizard looks more terrifying this way, but it doesn't change the fact that he looks like your grandpa with Alzheimer's. And along with packing 60 of the most deadly veneers ever to walk this earth, they could also fucking swim. Swimming with those arms is fascinating until you realize they're not as useless as you thought. Yeah, those biological barbecue utensils could lift 300 pounds. And this is what we'd look like if our arms were the same size as the T-Rex's. Anyone else getting Halo Flood vibes? And as you may have guessed, this is the T-Rex's closest ancestor. Wait, never mind. What are you doing here? There he is, the cock. We should change his name to Boner Bird. You remember this iconic sound he made too?
Yeah, it was fake, but here's the real one. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna hold my breath until I pass out or until you follow me. Thanks.